everything that every sort of ideology especially when people are convinced it isn't an ideology there is a ball that gets rolling uh, you know figuratively obviously and that ball has inertia so even if you find a way to really 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 slow it down it still has some inertia and the anti-SJW side of things has gotten to the point where just starting to speak anti-gay stuff is just a step around the corner. And many have, have continually said very anti-trans stuff, and I'm not just talking about the gender fluid stuff, which I only recently started to understand. Um, and I appreciate the comments that I've gotten for that. And the insults are getting worse and worse. They're, they're basically becoming something where if you don't look, act, and like all things conservative, then you're, and then you're, the, all the names will come. And especially things about appearance. You know, you have to look conservative. Unless you're Milo, and then you can make fun of people unless they look conservative, even though you got this bleached hair. And let's face it, the type of humor that's on most of the channels that are anti-SJW is the same type of humor that you'd picture being on a conservative radio show. Someone like Rush Limbaugh. The same type of humor that he would say. And there's a specific set of things that get focused on. It's the focus. One of those, another one of those things. You, you can tell who someone is in the way that they do everything. There are certain types of humor that are purely conservative. And there are types of humor that are purely liberal. And the most bigoted uh, humor from the conservative type of humor pisses off the liberals, and the same goes the other way around. But then people just try to act like, well, you know, it's, it's, it's humor. Well, you can tell what kind of mindset someone has in the type of humor they find the most funny. In the type of humor they will back the most. You can tell. This is why I think it is a lie that a lot of these people who are anti-SJW all the way down the line, not just SJW critics, but anti-SJW, are not liberals. This is why I believe they're not liberals quacks like a duck, walks like a duck. I don't care if it if it says that it's a, a moose, it's it's a duck. And don't get me wrong, I'm certainly not trying to say that if someone is liberal that they can't find right-wing humor to be funny. Humor is subjective. And, you know, it, some right-wing comedians also try to make sure they cover humor all over the place as far as demographics, so they'll have more listeners. And you know, but usually on the YouTube channels that are anti-SJW, there's not really hardly any humor that would be only left-wing. Plenty that would be only right-wing, and plenty that's kind of in the center, but none that only people on the left would find funny. Humor is subjective, I mean, you can't just lock something down, oh, this is what is funny. No, it's, it's, it's an emotional thing. But the type of humor that someone puts out is going to reflect their mindset. Unless they're really, really twisted like South Park. And I'm sorry, there, there is a misogynistic twist to a lot of people. It's when you put all of these things together. You don't look at just one the individual things, you, you string them all together. Okay, what does this represent? What is the mindset? But I see the, the anti-SJW side pretty much just acting just like Republicans. You can't say Republicans. You, you, you can't. I, I, I can say that. Okay, I won't say that about right-wingers, but I will say that about proud Republicans. It's, it's neophobic. It is resisting any sort of social change whatsoever. It would be against so many values that I fought for throughout the whole 90s up until probably 2002. 
it would it would be fighting against all of those things things i've put my life behind there was a period of time when i was in q patrol in seattle just trying to make sure that there isn't some sort of a a, a bashing about to happen or something like that you know and i i I, I just, knowing how much things have changed, and there's groups of people that just seem like they, they wouldn't, they, they'd be against the things that, that, that change in our society that allow that to not happen so much anymore. And I just... And I just see this element of, of, of things going back in time, like, you know, to, to what the hell awful things got in the 80s as far as that goes. And the attitudes towards people. I just don't want to see that again. I don't want to see it. And it's so ugly. And there's been so much peer pressure. Have this opinion or you're going to just have hordes of people coming after you. And I've made so many videos that that were siding with things that I didn't really agree with because I was afraid I was afraid of the judgment I've been more afraid of the, the, the way that the judgment is here on YouTube that I was of the anti-gay feelings that were in the, the early 90s and the late 80s. It's have this, have these opinions or be just swarmed. You must be conservative. You have to be conservative. You must be conservative. Don't push for any change. Don't push for anything positive to happen to anyone. Don't try to help out. I mean, it's like, well, you need to help out individuals. But there's a point you have to break things into groups. Yes, you help out individuals on individual levels. And I, I think if the government gives some sort of help, they should be able to look into the circumstances of someone. And not just the, the you know, the demographics they fit. But look at individual circumstances. But, but there are times you have to break, break apart groups so you can get things done efficiently. This is the legal sides of things. This whole thing is like, let's argue for inefficiency. Yay. I was thinking about the attitudes that people have about what, bla what Black Lives Matter is supposed to be about, but hasn't been in, in the way that people carry it out. But even that... I'm seeing tons of people just like being against it. Well, we need to do that for all people. When there, there, there are, I'm just, if that, I'm thinking about again, like it's the same place. It's the same place as in the eighties, the attitudes were towards gay people. Well, as long as they, you know, some, sometimes the attitude of people, of people who were considered tolerant and accepting would say things like, as long as they, uh, they don't flaunt it, they're all right with me. And yeah, that was a step, a nice step forward for things being better later and, and, and a more of an attitude of, well, people should just be themselves. But, you know, that's kind of what I'm seeing with, with uh, the, the attitudes towards Black Lives Matter, not just towards, obviously, the people that are pro some of the protesters, but the activists, I should say, 
but the actual ideals and ideas that Black Lives Matter is is talking about. And there has been a very, very, very bad past in what black people have experienced in this country. And we can't really deny that. And I guess I guess that's why people bring up history so much. I guess it would be, you know, well, they'd, you could say, well, when is it going to be good enough for them? When they actually are looked at the same as everyone else. When they really are. They're certainly not getting that right now. Whether you on an individual level are racist isn't what the issue is. And all of us have a certain amount of racism within us anyway. I mean, everyone. Not just this group or that group. No, everyone has a certain amount, you know, no matter what. And sexism and just xenophobia. We have a certain amount of that because that's just in human's nature. That's, that's just how it is. And you try to do what you can to conquer those things. That's the goal is to conquer those things. And people will, will, you know, why would you want to conquer those things? Well, those are things that keep us from accepting each other as human beings. Some of the attitudes I'm seeing towards trans people is one where some people are truly not looking at them as human beings. They don't say it directly. Well, you're inferring this. It's just like, it's, you, you can't, this is the problem with this whole thing. You can't just take a couple phrases. Well, the exact thing that was said was, and I'm like, ugh. Oh. And to me, it seems people are losing track of their own intent. And that's kind of scary. People who believe that if you word it just the right way, your intent will be different. And it's just like, no. It doesn't matter how you word it, your intent will show through. Just as one can see who you are through the way that you do everything. So, but people want to pretend they feel differently about something, so they'll word it a certain way. And then when you call them out on it, sometimes they're genuinely surprised because they genuinely don't know that that's what they're doing. And that's kind of weird. <laughs> and what's funny, some of the people, when, when you try to figure out a way to, 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 to word it, they'll use semantics and then they'll be against semantics. Then they'll be for semantics and then against semantics, depending on how they're discussing things. We are at a progression forward. And it seems apparently that it's a very painful one. See, the problem is, if you don't accept your own prejudices, there's really no way you can try to work around them. If you deny that the prejudices exist, then how can you work around them? You've convinced yourself that they don't exist. That doesn't work. Just like you can't work around your emotions in order to be more logical if you don't understand your emotions in the first place. And black people have had a history of being treated as less than human. And after all these years, there's still this element in the background. And it's, it's pervasive in the way that police treat black people. It's pervasive in the way that business culture treats black people. It's still there, but anyone complaining about it is... Their, the attitude is, well, you got what you want, so stop complaining. And it just seems like it's painful for a lot of white people to just think about what black people might go through. And with some, it's like it's painful to be empathetic. Painful. People will list all the things that black people end up going through, and the people will break apart those things individually and say, well, you know, that doesn't mean anything, and that doesn't mean anything. That shouldn't uh, mean anything. And there could be these lists, and they're still like, well, that shouldn't mean anything. It's like, do you ever look at anything as a whole picture, and, and like how the small things come together to make that whole picture? Do, do, do you think about that? And sometimes I think people have a hard time being able to do that. So, in the end, it's painful for them to think about this sort of thing. Either it's mentally painful or or maybe emotionally painful, I don't know. And the anti-SJW crowd has gotten to the point where if you try to talk about any of that, if you try to just say, hey, let's think about these things, 
what are other people going through? Um, the answer is, oh, white guilt. You're, you're trying to push white guilt. Uh, no. And I understand the way that a lot of the SJWs, everything that will come out of their mouth will be some sort of pejorative. You know, the whole, all that bullshit, uh, check your privilege and that shit, you know. And so, you know, that's understandable to, uh, to react against that. But that's obviously not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about where it genuinely seems painful for some people to be empathetic. Somehow that's painful. And so people who have really went through something as a minority see that. They're like, really? That's paining you? That's causing you pain just to look at this stuff? No, no, legally you, you have everything you want, so shut up. Uh, no, that's, that's not how that works. It's not how it works. And I guess, you know, the, the mindset that's around is that, well, I mean, if this same mindset would have been against any sort of materials put out over the past 50 years to try to have us have more of a, an attitude that we should look at, at each other as human beings. We can look at the people who do shitty things as bad. Fine. Look at the people who have done shitty things as bad. But don't put it outside of that. Because there are shitty people in every type of mindset. There are shitty people in every type of movement. There's shitty people there's shitty religious people. There's shitty atheist people. There's shitty agnostic people. There's shitty pagans. There's there's shitty diapers. There are shitty people everywhere. Just as there are good people everywhere. It used to be pretty painful to be gay. It still is to some degree, and there's a there's a fear of regression. But it's I don't like that the some of the rugged there, there's this rugged individualism culture that used to be associated with the gay community, like some of the uh, uh, the attitudes that were like during the Stonewall riots. And if it wasn't for those people, man, it would have taken so so much longer for for the progression that we have. That it allows people to feel is free to be who they want as much as they can. Like I, when I think about Muslims, right? Many are coming here because they know it offers a lot more freedom than what they have in their countries that they came from. And so many people are against Muslims really showing anything that displays that they're Muslim. It reminds me of... Uh, well, I accept gay people as long as they don't flaunt it. It's the same kind of argument. When I compare so many attitudes against gay people, whether, the, whether they were just slight attitudes or just direct words of, of you know, uh, that basically come down to you're a terrible, perverted, uh, nasty person because you're gay. But there is no advantage. I'm just thinking about the, 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 so many people who think the same way as what Eve Real was pushing forth. Again, we know that if we don't survive, we're dead. So the focus should not be on something that people are very, 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 very well aware of. There is no advantage to cramming something people already know in their faces. It's disappointing that there are so many people that don't seem to want things to be any easier for anyone because, well, I went through this and this, and I got through, and that made me a stronger person. Great! Now you're kind of emulating Mother Teresa in her, her, her adoration for, for misery. Congratulations! It's sick. It's sick. It's, it's a sick mindset. And it's spreading like wildfire. Because it is. It is. All the crap. All the judgmental crap that religion used to have the uh, uh, the sole proprietorship of. And this is what has had me depressed. 
also knowing that I've willingly aligned myself with it before. It's this feeling of, well, maybe they'll like me. And it's the thing I'm having to face is, I can't care if they do. But I also don't know if I could handle thousands. I have been so fortunate on this website. But I don't know if I could handle just thousands and thousands of comments like what some of these people experience because they're trying to push forth even though they're ignorant and don't know what they're doing but they're trying to push forth messages to try to make things better for this for our existence for everyone's existence and sure Sure, a lot of them really say some fucked up things in their ignorance because we are tribal. We do give in to peer pressure. We do this. I've done this more times than I can count and I've allowed myself to do it without really thinking about it. And so I'll say again, a lot of this stuff seems very Republican. And yes, we do have to stay strong. Telling people to stay strong is a good message, but that's not what's being done. It's more like pejoratives being thrown at people. And it's telling people that you're stupid to feel the way that you do. Buck up, because words don't hurt anyone. But so much of this seems to be an adoration of the misery of the human experience. Well, technically I use these words, no, the attitudes towards this. The, the When you put everything that, that someone has said together, it makes me think about, the, uh, there's, I don't even know whether this is a true, true story or not, but it's something that was explained to me a long time ago. That there was this telescope, had all these mirrors, and there's this one main surface on it that is just a it's it's a huge mirrored image and they looked they kept zooming in on it magnifying it looking at every little part of it to make sure that it was just perfect but they not once looked at it from afar and they put it together tried to use it and couldn't see shit through it had some sort of distortion that was just like, what's that from, right? And when they looked at it from afar, there was just this huge crack in it that was... They, they just never noticed because they were looking at all these little things and not at the the larger picture, right? This happens with words as well. And it's why it's just the final straw for me final fucking straw for me when people are making these arguments about words not hurting people. What a crock of shit. Crock of shit. And when someone pushes this sort of thing forth, it does make me want to throw some really nasty expletives at them. Because that's a crock of shit. It's one of the worst things I've ever heard anyone push forth. And it's become popular. It's become a popular narrative the fuck is wrong with you people? That's sick. That's disgusting. If words don't matter, then why the hell are you speaking a language? Why do you communicate at all? Words are about communication. What is it that you're communicating? Yes, words matter. And what's funny is, What's funny is, the same people that say this shit will, again, they'll choose when when semantics are important and when they're not. Well, it's important now. Well, no, stop talking about semantics. Oh, well, semantics are important. And you see it over and over again. It's disgusting. And I'm not standing for it anymore. It's rubbish. 
This mindset is equally as much of a religion as some of these extreme feminists out there use feminism as a religion. It's just as much. In fact, I'd say it's even more so. Because it uses it, 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 it uses such horrible, horrible shaming tactics. Well, I'm not part of the, I'm not part of a shaming tactic thing. I'm I'm not look at the look at what it's representing as a whole. What does that mean? Well, you're too stupid to know. You're too fucking stupid. You can see all these people doing this with the power of peer pressure and shaming tactics and insults, nasty, nasty insults and threats, all coming from a particular side. And you can't see this? You can't see what's wrong with this? You can't see that we are peer pressuring people into stating that they believe certain things, otherwise, well, they deserve to have the heat of a thousand suns uh, in their assholes or something. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's mind-boggling. That's what pisses me off about stupidity. That's what pisses me off about it. And when people try to explain things in a more simple way, it, people, well, you're treating us like we're stupid. Is you know is the the general emotional response from it, right? Then when people try just try to just say it like it is, nobody pays any attention. Nobody cares. There's not enough drama in it. There's not something they can sink their teeth into so they can start to call people names for having some sort of idea that we can make the world a better place in some way through either attitudes, through laws, through whatever. And I'm sorry for making that judgment when I, in the stupidity thing, but that's really the case. And you run out of, and, and I've run out of steam in trying to find a way to word things to get people to understand who are bound and determined to never understand or be open to understanding things. The amount of closed-mindedness on this platform is astounding. But I have definitely given into peer pressure on this platform. Well, these people t say they speak for, for reason and logic, and, and then you eventually believe that they're speaking for, re for reason and logic. This must be true because, you know, logic, reason, science. You can attempt to, to use logic, reason, and science to prove any sort of thing. You could use logic, I mean, let's God win this sort of thing, okay? And the reason why people do this is to show that, hey, even this, this can be applied to the worst extreme. Um, Hitler's mindset could be considered to be using logic, reason, and science. Hell, religious people, when they want to push forth that we should all live according to the same kind of mindset, and they're willing to kill people to make sure that everyone thinks the same or pretends to think the same, you could use logic, reason, and science to back up the idea that it's a good thing that they are trying to make everyone the same. The whole, well, I'm rational and logical, it doesn't mean shit. It doesn't mean shit how much someone considers themselves to be logical and rational. It doesn't matter how much someone repeats those fr that phrase, I'm logical and rational. It doesn't matter how much you repeat that. Because that's not the thing that actually matters. What matters is your treatment of others. That's what matters. That's what makes a difference. So most of this pretty much boils down to empathy. And if we can't show empathy towards those that are struggling with things that, well, maybe they were easy for us. Well, different things are difficult for different people. Some of the people that might be struggling with something that you think is just nothing, they might be able to do that you, you struggle with and don't even bother with and never even tried because you thought it would be too difficult. You know, everyone has different things that they struggle with. 
And if we're not going to stand up for each other, I mean, what the fuck good are we? We're all human beings going through life experience in the individual ways that we go through them through a number of different types of lenses. If we can't empathize with people just because they have a different lens than we do, what good are we?